I'm there with uh, with my uh, colleague uh, Jean. You heard him already about the question uh, to Erna. Um, I have made a small presentation which I try to share for you. Uh, let's see if that's possible. Well, it's a small presentation and it gives a little bit of overview of what we are doing. Um, uh, the mean uh, about it is that uh, we have uh, developed together with uh, Seoul Semiconductor and Sunlight Chip. Uh, it has costed us uh, over eight years to develop it. And that was made, first of all, because uh, of plant growth studies. And that's also why I introduced myself. Uh, as well, Fianda, we are a family business, uh, owned business uh, system. We are active in this industry since uh, 2008. Uh, officially, I'm a scientist, uh, biotechnology scientist, and I've developed over 30 years uh, light for plant growth studies from uh, Oxford to Uppsala, and from China, China to South Africa, even to Antarctic. Um, and one of the professors uh, who have asked me uh, if the light is so good for my plant, why it is not for me. And then we started to think about, okay, what is me and what is uh, human light and what is human well-being and why do we need sunlight? Uh, and then growers were telling to me if they uh, start uh, with uh, 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 incandescent uh, lamps or, or with starting with, with light, then uh, they started also with the headaches. And the headaches stopped uh, when they uh, got to springtime. Uh, and that was in uh, March, April. And then the nature take over, and then the plants were doing exactly what they need to do. So we said, okay, what is the best light to do? Uh, and then we started to, to develop together with uh, CO semiconductors uh, a chip, one chip, which has the full sunlight in it from UVA up to far red. Uh, and again, it is not a blue light, it is a real UVA chip, which is coated into the uh, uh, spectra of the, of the sun. And I will show you later how that is, uh, is set up. Uh, we did the first test in the horty sector. Uh, there's a simple reason for, uh, first of all, a plant don't move and he's not talking. So he shows you within five to 10 days how he feels about the sun and how he feels about the light. And then we did all kinds of testing from flowers up to bananas and from algae up to coral. And we find out that if there's only one recipe, we could grow everything and really everything. Also in nature behave. So uh, strawberries, we got them in one bricks value higher than the normal light or artificial lighting uh, and recipes of blue and red. So we really have uh, strong uh, feelings that, that sunlight is not only in nature better, uh, but also for the nature. So then we started to do testing in um, uh, animals. So we got further uh, by having uh, the animals in, in uh, pigs, for example, but also in horses, uh, uh, Grand Prix horses, so really top sport horses. And then we did find out that uh, together with uh, uh, doctors, animal doctors, veterinary arts uh, doctors, we find out that uh, muscle re, uh, recovery uh, was much uh, done earlier and better than we did uh, with the normal artificial lighting. And we saw that also at the pitch, we saw that with uh, the sunlight we used, uh, that we had an 8% better food conversion uh, than we had with uh, normal uh, incandescent bulb or TL tubes. So what we said is, OK, uh, if we find that out in the animal uh, and in the plant uh, areas, then we have to see and have, we have to develop uh, something which we can use in the human area. And then we started in the human area. Uh, and then, first of all, we wanted to show the difference between the normal LEDs and the sunlight LEDs. So if you have a normal LED, then everybody knows that it is made, or most of you will know that it is made from a blue LED, and then it is coated with uh, fluor uh, to get the, the light color you want to have. So that means that you have always a peak on blue, and you have a gap between blue and red and green. Especially this gap is basically made in the nature, which is the wrong idea about nature. So that's the reason why we want to develop a UVA chip, 
is the full spectrum correlation uh, of, of the sun. And if you see that then like that, um, then you go into the area that you say, okay, but if you want to go into that area, how do you show it then to people? Because the main problem is if you do it in the plant and you do it in the veterinary area, nobody talks against you. So you can do analytical testing. As soon as you start in the human area, you get all kinds of feelings and emotions. And uh, how do you feel and what do you feel about life? And what is the emotion behind life? And I was also telling about it. And for that point, we started in dementia and Alzheimer. Uh, because these people are not directly reacting on the light, but show on the way of behavior of the people how they react on the light. So we started in that area. And then we find out that these people, we could get back into the biorhythm of the circadian lighting circle. So then we said, OK, during the day, you are active. During the night, you sleep. And then even we find out that we could yes, use less uh, medicines uh, to go to sleep. And that we have also less activation of nurses during the evening or during the night. Then we started to do the same test at people who are running five uh, shift uh, uh, systems in a 24 seven uh, control room. And then we didn't do that with coloring changing. So the real circadian lighting, but we did it by control the light, the amount of light, but full daylight, full sunlight, uh, but all on 5,200 Kelvin rate. Uh, and then even in the night shift from 11 o'clock to five o'clock in the morning, AM, PM, or PM, AM, sorry. So also there we find out that these people will have no block or no distortion of their biorhythm. So they get brought the children to school. They don't have any problem with eating or sleeping or whatever. So, and then we got in contact with Jan and Jan was asking me, Ronald, uh, why don't you uh, come to the Good Life Group? Because with this kind of knowledge, we can help each other. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. It is not that as a manufacturer and developing of lighting system that we want to promote our lighting. It's OK if you want to have more information about it. But what we want to do is we want to share information with each other and to learn from each other, because quite a lot of, uh, with all kinds of uh, respect, cowboys, and gladly enough, one has left uh, this organization. Uh, but quite a lot of these kinds of cowboys are ruining the world of good life. And we think that everybody has the right to get good life. So we make it also affordable. So we are now in discussion and we have already done quite a lot of uh, projects in healthcare, but also in offices, um, also in, in uh, hospitals, um, and also in the chemical control rooms 24-7. So we are a company owned by myself. Uh, we have an intrinsic value um, and we like to, to combine good light with knowledge. And we like to combine that with well, people who have the same ideals uh, inside this group. So we hope that we get, get more contact with each other and to learn and to understand better uh, issues about lighting and about the good way of lighting. That's it. OK, thank you, Ronald. Interesting presentation. Uh, and I've also visited your showroom, uh, where you basically have two, um, uh, if I remember well, a real window, uh, um, uh, ceiling window, and an artificial one. You yeah. can hardly. Um, Tell the difference between those two. That's great. Yeah. Are there questions for Ronald? Marijke, please. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. And uh, I like your incentive uh, a lot. And I like the spectral characteristics of your LED a lot. Um, but I didn't understand quite well what you what you tested with the night shift. Um, can you can you explain me what you did and and how you evaluated the effects for the night shift? For the yeah, I think you mentioned uh, shift work. 
yeah, yeah. Well, what we did is uh, the, the main problem in the 24-7 uh, control rooms is keeping the people, especially in the night shift, so in the 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning, six hours, to keep them uh, concentrated uh, without the disturption of uh, day and night rhythm. Uh, because normally this is a five shift system, and that means that you are two days to maximum three days you have this night shift, and then you continue to the middle shift or well, another type of shift. And uh, with normal lighting, people were falling asleep, or people were not activated, or people get disruption uh, from going to, to home. Uh, and then uh, went to sleep or didn't have any appetite, uh, etc. So our feeling was to do a test and we simply uh, did some interviews with the people who are working inside this area, uh, not by us, but by the human resource manager of that companies. Uh, and then we simply asked questions uh, and not question about what do you think about the light? No, but how do you went to, to, to home? Uh, what did you do with your children? If you are wearing lenses, did you get dry eyes or did you have headaches? Uh, but but, uh, but, but you, what you did with the light was you increased the light with your LED. You okay. took a daylight uh, scheme for the night or? That depends, that depends on uh, the way how the building was set up and that, that also depends on uh, if these people are only in the room or also having to went to the factory itself. Because we had control rooms where the people are very often went to the factory and then they have to cross over the street and they cross over the street internally, of course, uh, but that means really dark light and then went back into the control room. So then we coupled these light systems to each other. And that means that if we have outside less than 10,000 lux, we lower down the line to the minimum and that minimum was 300 lux. And then when we have outside more than 10,000 lux, we increase the light to the maximum of 700 lux. Okay, okay. So that's, that was the control mechanism. Okay, uh, interesting. So it may be good to mention that as uh, the, the science advisors of the Good Light Group are also trying to make recommendations for night workers, which is still very difficult, uh, what you need to do. And there's also not one common recommendation possible because it depends a lot on the type of shift work, the people, the, the kind of work they do. But maybe interesting uh, for you to know that we are working on trying to develop uh, at least some recommendations there as well. Well, that's good to hear, Marijke, because uh, we have done this now at Friesland Campina, at Camelot, at Camira, at Allegami, uh, well, quite a lot of these kind of uh, companies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. May, uh, Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Marijke. I, I saw also uh, Kevin yeah, raise his hand. Yep. Um, I've just got a question about the spectrum you showed. It still seems quite deficient in the uh, near infrared area uh, in deep reds. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts were regarding being able to extend that, given the discussions that are around at the moment about how useful that is for uh, mitochondrial growth and energetic uh, effects. Yeah, well, to be honest, Kevin, I don't have an answer to that directly. Um, we did it, uh, the far red, uh, we, we increased it or we included it because of the plant. Uh, the plant has an, uh, an red far red ratio issue uh, or getting strength uh, and, and grow up. And that far red ratio runs up to uh, 735 nanometers. And uh, that is measured against the red faction, and that is 626 nanometers. And then together with blue and green, uh, the plant can grow competitive, competitive against uh, a competitor or against its relatives. Um, and quite a lot of things we are getting from plants and the knowledge of plants, and we use it finally in human being. Um, so we think that 735 nanometers could inter interfere with activity in our brains, but still we don't know, as far as I know. Okay, okay. Yeah. thank okay. you. Uh, Joachim, I think you are, if, if there anybody else wants to ask a question, please raise your hand, otherwise okay. Joachim will be the, the last one because of okay. your time. I just, Joachim. Have a, 
I just okay. Thanks a lot. So so thanks for your presentation. I, I was wondering in regard to sort of the uh, sort of animal tests that you did and and most particular uh, sort of horses. Um, what did you do there? Sort of did you introduce a um, a sort of sunlight -like spectrum during the day or or and and then change that in the evening? And what what sort of light did you use in the evening? Because I'm not yeah, sure well, that I can see that. Yeah, well, in my opinion, uh, with the horses, we did only the daylight, so only the 5,200 Kelvin. And the reason why is that um, quite a lot of horses here in the Netherlands doesn't have the capability or the, 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 the possibility to get outside from the stables. So they are staying inside the stables. Uh, and that means that uh, getting inside these horses, uh, not only for the recovering of the muscles, but also for the hair growing in the wintertime, uh, mm -hmm. They was getting the feeling that it is still summertime. So it is not. What do you do time. in the evening? Well, we what we did is we did testing on 16 hours daylight and eight hours uh, night shift. So okay, the normal so rhythm is 8. Okay. So yeah. the reason why I'm asking the reason why I'm asking is because, as you might know, horses are dual chromats. So mm -hmm. this means that they don't sort of possess an L-cone receptor. So potentially you could tap into this in regard to the sort of dynamics of your lighting system. You're right. Uh, also, the way how a horse take up the light is only by eyes uh, and not by uh, the skin or the, the uh, so, so not like we are doing. Um, but still, we find out that quite a lot of uh, aggressivity of, of horse and also the stress factors because we were measuring also the stress factors inside the horses by mm -hmm. taking uh, the cortisols. Um, and we find out that uh, there was less, uh, how do you call it, fluchtgedrag, uh, what is the official English word? Uh, escape, escape behavior. Yeah, yeah, uh, running away mode is, how do you call it? Uh, flight, uh, flight. Flight behavior. Yeah, yeah okay sure. yeah that, thank you <laughs> um, and and uh, they were much more relaxed and this relaxation the relaxation came also against back to the muscles of the horses so uh, inside the, the muscles of the horses you get normally like ours uh, a, a quite a lot of amount of, of uh, products which are not good for for the muscles itself and the replacement of the, the, that kind of stuff was much better. The building the, 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 the was much better controlled by these light. When were you using that or against not using that? Hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thanks for the questions, uh, Ronald. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation.